Check out. Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is another episode of Community Conversation with Randy Verbeck. Verbeck. Forgot for a second. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Say that, let's get started. This is just kind of, uh, I may use it, I may not use it. So. Okay. All right, Randy, we're in Battle Mountain. You invited me over. Thank you. So, how's your day going? Not working, so that's good. Not working. This is your, you got off, when did you get off? I got off yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? Yep, so I just what got time? nights. What time? I get home about 6.30 in the, in the morning. In the morning. And you're on the five and four, huh? Yep. Dang. You like that? You like? I hate the five and four. You hate it? I love Super 7. What's that? Uh, Super 7 is four nights, three off, three days, one off. Three nights, uh, three off, four days, seven off, I believe. That's how it was. Dang, man. It, all that work for seven off, though. Seven off is... Seven great. days off. Yeah, that's vacation every month. And what do you do for those days? Oh, man. My family, we'd go to the Oregon coast, fishing, salmon. You fish, you know? too? Oh, yeah. I'm a, I haven't fished. I have not been fishing. I know. You've I, never been fishing? I've not never been fishing. Probably have been fishing when I was probably a kid. So probably, yeah, never. Officially never been fishing. So that probably might be something that you might have to add on our list. <laughs> well, okay. If you want to make a camping trip out of it, because that's what we do is camping. is Wild Horse Reservoir. Uh -huh. That is my bread and butter. That is catfish and huge trout all day long. You want to teach about that. And, uh, you know, give me an idea. Our last video, you said that you want people to be more educated. Not only about more Battle Mountain, but um, about uh, hunting. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do that for fishing too? Yeah. I so, love teaching people how to fish correctly. <laughs> I mean, it, it's hard What's to... What's the incorrect way? Wrong bait, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Setting the hook the wrong way, not leaving your bait out long enough, wrong wrong spot. There's a, there's a bunch of I was like, is there, there. Is there like, Is there like a throwing motion like oh you, you can't throw too hard or that power bait's <laughs> gonna come off you gotta throw it just right just a little oomph <laughs> um, little oomph and you'll get it out there can you wear like the wrong attire oh no you're good wife beater boxers don't matter that's what i was thinking <laughs> you got the wrong clothes on man we can't be wearing that out there you're gonna scare <laughs> the salmon away <laughs> that's what i was thinking but yeah See, I'm from, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, he's from the, would you call this country? Is it this country? No, 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 like, would you, like, he the, like, country folk? Yeah, we're country. They, so he's like, and I'm from, like, the city, so. We're rednecks with we're, paychecks. We're, cl <laughs> we're clashing for the first time, and you guys get to see that. But we can get along, so y'all should be able to get along, too. Yeah. So tell us, uh, tell us, tell us a little bit about your culture and how you were raised as far as. I was raised, because of my size, my mom had to raise me a little differently than most people would. Pretty much, I was raised as a protector. And it was a little odd when I see how other people are raised, but I look back on my childhood. Because I was so big, I had to really be careful on how I interacted with other kids. Because they were not my size at all, right? That there played was, a difference when you grew up? Yeah. There was multiple times where I was in the principal's office because kids were horsing around with each other, and then I'd get involved, and my horsing around got out of control. You went here, about a mile. Yeah. yeah. I went to this school, oh. and uh, just multiple times. I, I can't remember most of them, but my mom keeps telling me about stories about it, and like, that ain't right. You know, mm -hmm. but I was raised differently, and then it finally set in around fourth or fifth grade, where I finally just like shut down playing, and I had to just relax, watch all the other guys. 
do what they do. And I just did that. And then later on, went into sports and it really took off in sixth grade when I finally joined the football team. Sixth grader, 6'3", 275 pounds. I was a pretty good asset on the team. <laughs> yeah. And then baseball, basketball, played that all the way into high school. And Do you ever feel like you were unfairly treated because of your... Nah. It's so big or what? Nah. I got pretty big, but uh, mainly in uh, my freshman year, I was pretty overweight at the time. And coaches doubted me, except for one coach on the varsity football team, Danny Itza. He told the junior coach, you're going to get him playing or I'm going to take him from you. Sure enough, he did, and I started playing and just took off, and Tim Knight passed away, and he uh, got me on a diet plan, and oh, here we go. Can I make this for you? Okay. There you go, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. That is bull elk backstrap that I harvested last year. I want to see the reaction. It's tender. Right? You know, <laughs> that's like an 800 pound animal. You know, I'm right just now. like, I, <laughs> it's rich, yeah. tender. It's. I told you, I this is, you. This is. I thought those were brownies. I was like, brownies? <laughs> brownies. <laughs> they look like brownies. <laughs> this is savory, not sweet. This is, yeah. Just that one bite, I want to be honest. If I ate that whole thing that was preserved from the store, is it equivalent to that one bite? Mm -hmm. You need to look at a chart. I don't remember the numbers on protein amount. I, versus. Uh, I feel like the animal is. Yeah, right? That, like, its presence, of, it's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you. It's still alive. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But you need to look at a chart. I don't know the numbers, the protein amount, like per pound or whatever it is. I've never been eating Elk before. is at the top. Right? That's it? Versus lean meat. We're talking protein versus fat. I've never I've never eaten in my life until now. Imagine that with mashed potatoes and gravy now. Dip that in some gravy. Ooh. My wife's going to love this. There you go. This is... Really? Really, America? <laughs> That's how I feel right now. I'm, I'm upset. I'm upset. I. This is what. This is what it was. That's just a little taste. You haven't even tried tenderloin, liver, heart, and heart's my favorite. The heart. The heart is my favorite. Do they do they sell that in grocery stores? No. Why? Just a rare commodity, I guess. Okay, before before we started, I was just kind of like, yeah, we're going to do an interview. But now, <laughs> we're going to do some teaching. Story on my life is switching it up. We're going to, y'all need is, to know. This is the end of the story Y'all need to, life. yeah. <laughs> this is the end, right? This is where it amounts to. Because we eat most of our lives. Yeah. And we use that energy. It's like, that is God's country. Come out, come eat, come shoot, come hunt, come. Yeah. Can I have another? <laughs> and you know, I had I had stomach surgery in 2012, and my guts cannot handle that processed crap. No. Like, I go to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm driving to Reno or Salt Lake. I'll start eating. I literally hours. I gotta throw up. Do you see my face? Yeah. <laughs> like you gotta that, throw up. That processed crap, and then. After a while, like I'm not eating the right stuff, I feel bad. My wife will cook up some venison. It like just cleanses everything. Like I'm, I'm back on track. I'm good to go now. Thank you. That's what this does for me. I don't know how it works in the body, but it works. This is great, man. Thank you so much. This oh yeah. Gotta finish my bite. Now. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to have more for dinner. Yeah. You started it. Well, I'm finishing that. So that's... It's all yours now. That, that's you and your wife's. That is, and that's what that's my babies meat. are eating right there. That's... This is meat. 
the joy. I mean, I want to. I want to be honest. You know what I told you earlier when I just we just met mm -hmm. about what happened. We yeah. lost a friend uh, to suicide. This just lifted my day up right here. I appreciate this so much. You bet, Thank man. You. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy this with my wife. I don't want another one. I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot. It's a lot taken at the same time. So thank you again. Thank yeah. you for this meat. Y'all need to y'all need to eat some real meat. Like I go out, hunt, learn how to butcher. And this is what you can have. Every year you can have good lean meat. You knew where it came from. And it doesn't go bad when you put it in the freezer either. That depends. What how to, tell us about that, you just You have to butcher it correctly. And my father well my stepdad, but he is my father. He's my dad. He taught me a way that he learned in Wyoming how to butcher. And it is it takes a very long time versus other people. Yeah, he's on point again. You should see this dog over here. He's on point on a butterfly <laughs> again. But he taught me a way of it's called sinew. Silver skin. On the meat. On every muscle group it's surrounded by a silver skin. If you cook it with it on, it's gonna be chewy. Very, very chewy. That ain't gonna make the meat go bad in the freezer. What makes the meat go bad in the freezer is the fat. Venison fat is a no-no. It is horrible tasting. You do not want it. You need to get all of that out. And I have had people give us venison that they did not like in wax paper. I thaw it out, open it up. It's nothing but fat, ligament, sinew. I'm like, this is absolutely horrible. You paid a butcher to do this. In wax paper alone, I'm against it. I vacuum seal everything. Question. If someone just went hunting, knocked on your door, like, hey, I need you to help me with this. Do you charge? Would you? Uh, how for, would that work out? You know, for antelope, I don't know, 100 bucks. If they just want steaks, 100 bucks, right? If they want jerky, burger, summer sausage, go on from there that I can do, I charge, let's see, antelope, 125 for the extras. They've never been hunting before. They were like, Randy, we saw the video. Oh, running. man. Uh, if they never went hunting before, I really hope they feel just it, right? Especially an antelope. You're talking They're like, we want you to come with us. Oh, if they want me to come with them? Their, their first with? time, if they want me to come with them, I won't charge them. I think. I'm going to teach them. If they come back to me wanting me to butcher, then I'll charge. Because I feel like what we're saying is basically a lot of a lot of people are uneducated a lot of people don't know people to oh, yeah. educate them yep. what if they want to be educated who who would go with them you know and that's honestly i want to be honest i i think that's a lot of the maybe the issue is just kind of like you know like a child like daddy mommy come do this with me you know what i mean and yep. it's just like making a friend you know okay like i i wouldn't do it because i wouldn't have anyone to invite me to do it that would be my reason and i think a lot of people have that same reason would you be willing to do that? Yeah, I would. Because, like I, I said before, like I enjoy just seeing the reaction of other people's faces on something that I love. I, it's my passion. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to show someone what I love, and then I start seeing their love go into it. I'm like, this is this is what it's all about. That is what I love. I can taste the love. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, there's a lot of stuff that people don't know, and I've even had... What was it? Three years ago, mm -hmm. this guy shot a cow elk. California. Didn't field dress it. Asked my dad to help him load it into his trailer. Mm -hmm. And my dad's like, "You can't just haul this to California with the guts and everything in there. You gotta, you gotta clean it." He didn't know any better. Like, why are you out hunting and you don't know how to process this meat? Mm -hmm. What's the point? Mm -hmm. You won't get that. If you don't handle it correctly, mm -hmm. I'd love to teach that to people. I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to do that and help you do that. If that's okay, we'll talk about it more. But it's just gonna—it's—it's it's hard because my family hunts a lot. 
you know, then what if you could do that full time? That's what I'm Oh, full time? If you could do that full time, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, full saying. time? I'm just saying. How much you paying? I'm just saying. <laughs> if, it was, if it was basically, if you could do it full time, would you? Absolutely. Because that is my passion, and I would love to just get everyone to enjoy that. Because what if enough people came and was like, hey, and you started to be that guy, and then they were like, to the point where you're like, financially, you were becoming sound in that area, and you're like, we can, we don't, I don't really need to go back to work. There's, we, we've got so many people asking a year out from now, two years out. I'm just saying. So, so hunting, teaching hunting, right. teaching butchering, right. teaching cooking right. versus right. mining. <laughs> I'm gonna teach people how to hunt. <laughs> I'm gonna teach them how to, but I'll do everything. Right. If I don't have to go back, to <laughs> I would love that. But it's it's a far stretch when you're talking. Is it? To, is it? Is it? Because I I want to you know we're we're doing it, man. Like yeah, we're we're there there. I didn't know because people didn't ask. Mm. People didn't ask because people didn't see that I was doing it. You know, and that's what I'm doing it. So I just want to encourage you. Maybe just maybe this video could could start something. You know, I could do it seasonally because it, it is seasonal. It's August through, if you want to include Chuck or November or but that's no, in February. Battle Mountain. That's in Battle Mountain. What if, you know, there's other places in the world that, hey, we need you over here. Well, here's a bunch of money. Well, you you got to keep here. in mind. Hotel. For me, the right. way I butcher, right. one deer takes eight hours. You'd be surprised what people want to pay. For your skills, for your assets, for your technical skills, you know. Yeah. The years and years have been developing. They don't have those years that you do. You know, people don't pay me to just hold the camera. They're paying me for the, the you know, the, the eye that I've been developing in my entire life. You know, the cinematic, the storytelling. The, you know, all that. I'm not just a guy with a camera or an editing system. You're not just a guy with a rifle and some meat. You're a guy that has these abilities, these talents, these gifts. Where you passionately put in all your effort into and create this amazing, you know, substance for us to enjoy. And to, I feel all that love. I, do. I feel a whole history in just this meat right here. I feel a whole, like, man, I, I feel like I was there. I don't know. I just feel that, you know. Yeah. And, like, hopefully in our videos when you guys watch it that you feel that, wow, like, this cinematic, right, the storytelling, the, you know, it's work. Yeah. It is work. Passion. When I look at that, <laughs> I, I keep imagining packing that bull elk right. down 300 yards of mountain. That's what I see when I look at that. That's an 800 pound animal I had to drag down a hill. That's <laughs> what I see, and that's what it turned into. <laughs> I was dead beat tired. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we want to get your story out. Okay. Not just, you know autobiography but just the story of what this is like and and people like yourself they sell this to the stores but man if you can get it before the stores you oh, get yeah. a hold of it that's amazing <laughs> i'm like you already have it i know man i'm <laughs> gonna I save can't, some for the wife. i can't stop <laughs> like every bite just lights me up every chew you know what i mean like oh. In my soul and my heart, it's like, wow. <laughs> we got a saying, when you eat elk meat, it makes it stronger. When you eat chucker, it makes it faster. Because they run fast. Yeah. You think you're fast. I need to get you out chucker hunting. Let's Stop see if ball. you can catch a chucker running uphill. I'd like to see that. Well, you're probably going to see that. You're going to definitely see more of me. Hey, you got till February. I see more of this meat. Okay. <laughs> so we're planning on shooting um, the process, the whole pro, the entire process of the the rifling, zeroing in, the hunting, the patience, you know, the, um, yep. just all of the above. We want at the dinner to cooking. We want to see it all, and we want you guys to see it. Not only just to see it, but to inspire you to come out. And, and meet men like um, Randy. Oh, Daz Galena. Hey guys, 
you're missing Battle Mountain for what Battle Mountain really is. That's basically what we're this whole thing yeah. has been about, right? You can make plenty of money here, but that's right. not the half of it. Right. There's another reason why people stay here. Right. And you're looking at it right there. And that's what, yeah. <laughs> this this would make me want to stay here, to be yeah. honest. I'm like, man, this is... And I, and I actually do like the small community. I actually do. What I mean is just, you know, when some issue happens, everyone's on it. You know what yep. I mean? As far as, like... Yeah, there's that negative thing that's just always there, but we all have family issues. But you you really see the community bouncing back in areas, in area, staying strong. You know, I look at it as my own family. When we go through struggles, we don't just flee. You know, we, we stay together and we deal with it and we yep. overcome it together. And um, you don't get that in a city, at least my experience. I wouldn't imagine you would. Everyone's just like, oh, trouble, they're gone. You know? Yeah. Not here. And I think that's the test. It's like, it's not Battle Mountain, are you strong enough? I think it's Battle Mountain, are you family enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because even like, like I, we were talking about Danny Sullivan. Mm-hmm. I grew up with that guy since I was a little kid. And we just had this little pack of Danny Sullivan, Eric Salas, Matthew Murphy, and we, their parents named us the Four Horsemen. We were just so close, tight knit. What's up, bud? Okay. <laughs> but just so tight in and then nothing has came across that broke us apart mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. and then we're always willing to help other people mm-hmm. and I see that across other families other groups it's like they're so tight mm-hmm. there's no conflict it's, it's great mm-hmm. I think uh, you know people say oh Battle Mountain with this and that I think it's I think it's really like going down It's that it's that relationship, it's that trust, it's that camaraderie, you yeah. know, building that when things get hard, can I rely on these people? Can I rely on this person? Or are they just gonna and I think Battle Mountain sees that in people, they're just like people don't they're not able to make it because they're you know it's just chat the challenges of life come and they they just give up and they're like, ah, it's not for me. It's like Yeah. You're not going to find that anywhere else you go either, right? Yeah. You're just like, are you going to give up there too? Like, so this is, man, this is amazing. This. <laughs> y'all got to try this meat, man. <laughs> I only got so much. Don't be knocking on my door. Well, we appreciate you being on our show yeah. again. And um, this is, I'm looking forward to this hunting. I'm looking really forward to that. And I actually think antelope is better than elk. Shoot me if I'm wrong, but I love antelope more than elk. On a, per- on a percentage, if you could rate it, I know you wouldn't, but if you could, what, to a, 1 to 10, how much better would you say that is in comparison to this? Okay, this so is? antelope versus elk. If the antelope is harvested properly, because there's a lot of information you don't know about antelope, on you got to shoot it right, you got to harvest it right, but... I would say elk is an eight, right? Antelope, ten. <laughs> I love antelope. I haven't had a bad one. I've had bad deer. I've had bad elk. I have not had That's a bad all antelope. all harvesting, process of harvesting. When you, uh, so antelope are a little tricky because it's so hot. Elk, we're talking 90 degrees, right? Nevada. You got to get it on ice immediately. That's a plus. Mm. If you shoot it while it's scared on the run, like you spooked it, adrenaline goes through the veins, bad. Immediately. Ooh. And I've had a few of those. It's antelope. Yep. And that's, that's the 10. Yep. I'm going to pray for that. And hopefully he can capture that. He can get the shot. <laughs> He's going to get that no, shot. No, not me. Who? My wife. Your wife? My wife's got the tag. Well, I'm gonna find them, <laughs> distract them. My wife's gonna put the stock, and, and we're gonna we're gonna serve it up in it, and um, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna make it. <laughs> oh, it's gonna happen. You're gonna see plenty. We'll just see if we can get close enough. Yeah. All right, man. We appreciate you. Any last words? I'll just good luck hunting. Good hunting. Thanks.